put a bookmark right there in terms of the plant defense chemicals and sidestep for one moment and talk about anthropology. I think this is a very interesting framework, a lens through which to view these questions as well. So I went to visit the Hadza last year in Tanzania with my friend, Anthony Gustin. I talked about that trip many times in the past, but what do the Hadza think about vegetables? I can tell you very clearly the Hadza don't give a shit about vegetables. They don't really eat vegetables. While we were there, they never ate a leaf. They never ate a seed. The men couldn't be bothered with roots, which we dug with the women, almost because we just wanted to see how they did it, but the men didn't want anything to do with the roots. What the men wanted to do was hunt animals, to eat the animal meat, to eat the animal organs with us. And when they found honey, they wanted to eat that. And when we found berries, they were excited about that. And this is corroborated by people who have spent far more time with the Hadza than me. Frank Marlowe is perhaps the person who has studied the Hadza the most. He has a book, and this is a paper that I will show you that I think is quite interesting regarding the Hadza's preference in foods. The title of this paper is Tubers as Fallback Foods and Their Impact on Hadza Hunter-Gatherers. I will call your attention to this table, table one, looking at the foods eaten by the Hadza. We have honey, we have baobab, we have different types of meat, we have berries, and we have tubers. There are no other vegetables. There are no leaves. There's no kale on this table. There's no seeds on this table. The Hadza will eat those foods, but only if they are starving. That is the point that I made in my first book, The Carnivore Code, that I think vegetables are very likely survival fallback foods for humans that we would eat in the event of starvation, but probably not the first foods we would select as humans throughout our evolution. And this makes sense intuitively. Many of you will know this intuitively. Looking at this table, this is quite interesting. This is the mean preference rank on the y-axis uh, and both males and females. Both males and females think that honey is their favorite food, followed by meat in males, then baobab, and then berries, and then tubers are last for males. Females rank berries, baobab, and meat about the same, but both sexes say tubers are a distant fifth in terms of their foods. Again, there are no other vegetables other than tubers on this list, there are no leaves, there are no salads, there are no seeds, nuts, or grains on this list. The Hadza eat baobab, and I ate baobab with them, but they don't eat the seed. They might eat the seed if they're starving, but they threw the seed away. So this is quite interesting to me that within hunter-gatherer groups, there is a clear preference for meat and organs. That is very clear. Beyond that, honey, berries, other fruit like baobab, which is what the Hadza have in Tanzania, and then distant, we might find tubers as a fallback food. And as a fallback, fallback food, we might find vegetables. So the notion advanced by so many in the nutritional community that hunter-gatherers were eating lots of vegetables just doesn't hold up to scrutiny and it doesn't make sense to us intuitively. In Costa Rica where I live, there's a river below my house. And if I go down to the river and just spend time at the river and I think, what would I eat if I lived here, if I were hunter-gatherer. Of course, it's a contrived notion, but I think it's an interesting thought experiment. There's nothing to eat down there other than a seasonal fruit, maybe an animal if I can catch it. If I can find a beehive, I'll get some honey. I'm not going to go eating bitter leaves if I can hunt something that has more nutritional value, more calories, and more payoff to me in the end. I might eat some leaves if I know which ones are not absolutely going to kill me if I'm totally starving, but are they going to be my first choice? No. So why is it that when you walk into any grocery store, the thing that's gonna hit you in the face, depending on the grocery store you go into, let's say Whole Foods, is antioxidants, kale, spinach, vegetables are the best thing. Eat more vegetables if you wanna thrive. You should be fiber fueled. Eat more vegetables, eat more vegetables. It makes absolutely no sense. Again, if you're thriving, why change anything about your diet? But how many of you can honestly say that you're thriving and you don't want to improve, you don't need to improve anything in your diet. I'll leave that for you guys to answer. I think many of us, many of our families, many of our children would be better without these foods. And just this as an aside, how many conversations that turn into crying fits at the dinner table could be avoided if you stopped forcing your kids to eat vegetables? Why do you think your kids hate vegetables? They're not excited about them because they don't, they're not good for them. Yes, vegetables are better than Snickers. Vegetables are not better than meat and organs, either fresh or desiccated, like we make it hard in soil, fruit, honey, and raw dairy. No chance. So in 2022, if you are a successful hunter-gatherer, what signal would you give your body? You would give your body the foods 
that it seeks most, that it craves most, that your ancestors have always sought. And I believe that is the list of foods that comprise an animal-based diet. Then you're sending more of a signal of abundance to your body. Eat a bunch of vegetables, you're sending a signal of scarcity to your body. And future conversations about linoleic acid will corroborate that as well. We know that many hibernating animals, at least cold weather hibernating animals, increase the amount of linoleic acid in their diet when they want to become fat and hibernate. I think that there is this idea in the natural world that for some animals, linoleic acid is a signal for hibernation, for winter, for fattening, for scarcity. I think vegetables are also a signal for scarcity for many animals and potentially humans. They're just simply not the most palatable, tasty, enjoyable, bioavailable nutrient-containing foods, and they have all these defense chemicals, which we cannot ignore. 